Interior Secretary Chapman says we have nearly reached the bottom of the barrel in some of our natural resources. He says we've dug deep into our mineral deposits, drained off much of our petroleum, depleted many of our forests. And he adds, we can never again afford to gorge and waste. The chief of the Navy's nuclear research program, Dr. Erner Liddell, said today that the so-called flying saucers are nothing but plastic balloons used as in cosmic ray research. And William Webster, chairman of the Research and Development Board, says there is nothing to flying saucers. Mr. Webster also told reporters, everybody knows there will be an atomic artillery shell someday. Did you see this item in the morning paper, Billy? What item is that, Ralph? You know, what we were talking about. It says the Air Force announced today a powerful new flare for night photography and said the device has been responsible for some reports of flying saucers in the last two years. Well, maybe so, Ralph, but what about the reports of flying saucers from Europe and Korea, India, yeah. and Africa, and gee, all over the world? Well, they're, they're, that's true, but, well, let's wait till Art comes over. He's, uh, he's bringing a friend, you know, Art? who's quite a famous scientist. He has a telescope uh, near Mount Palomar, oh. and with a special camera. He's actually photographed flying saucers in outer space, that's what Art says. You, you mean he's actually oh. photographed those? What's his name? Uh, Professor Adamski, I think Art said. He could explain a lot of things about this. Well, I sure hope so. Yeah, I do too. You know, sometimes I wonder, will we ever learn to, to live long enough to learn the whole truth about the flying saucers? <laughs> Oh, hello there. Come in. This is the backyard. We're on CBS radio here every afternoon now. I'm Ralph Story. That's Billy Wardell at the keyboard. And we're expecting Art Wenzel with his accordion in a minute or two, and a special guest, too. Billy and Art will play for us, and we'll hear some songs by everybody's prettiest neighbor, Miss Roberta Lynn. So, hope you spend a few restful moments with us here. Have a lawn chair there, and you're always welcome in the backyard. Gee, there's been so much published and written and said about flying saucers. I'm awfully anxious. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Hi, Art. Hi, Art. You know, it's about I, time. Yeah, I tried to hurry. <laughs> I gotta uh, fix that the professor's over at the house. He's fixing up. He's shaving and getting refreshed. He's, he's here. here. He's oh, here. he's here, and he's going to be over, and believe me, wait till you hear what he has to tell Boy, us. Boy, I can't wait. I'm oh, he told me a few you. things, but I just told him, wait until you... What What's was that? that? Hey, what the world? Which well, way did it go? It's a jet, honey. Uh, well, they go over so fast you can't tell which way they've gone. They start over there and they go beyond the horizon before you can name it. Wow, I see. Beyond the blue horizon waits... Ralph Story was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan on August 19, 1920. He served as a U.S. Army fighter pilot during World War II and started a career in broadcasting after the war. His big break came in 1948 when he was hired to host and direct an early morning show on KNX in Los Angeles. Story's casual style and witty observations about life in L.A. won him national recognition. He went on to do various shows before going into TV in the 1950s. This afternoon's show, Ralph Story's Backyard, featured story, sidekicks, and musical accompaniment. On July 16, 1953, his guest was UFO follower George Adamski. Adamski claimed to have met with friendly Nordic aliens and to have taken flights with them to the moon and other planets. Many of Adamski's assertions were widely disputed. Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, head of Project Blue Book, the U.S. government's Air Force group assigned to investigate UFOs, considered Adamski to be a talented con artist and likened him to P.T. Barnum. You must be Professor Adamski. How do you do? Uh, this Won't is, you uh, glad to meet this you. is the professor. Uh, here's Miss Roberta Lynn. Oh, how do you and, do, uh, Professor? Very, I'm very, very, very happy. glad to know you. Uh, Fine, and come on in. Ralph, uh, how do Ralph you? Story. How do you do, Ron? And how here's do you? Billy Wardell. He's sitting at the piano. How, how do, do you do, do Professor? Do Gee, do? I, it's a real pleasure to have you visit us in the in the backyard. Uh, Art was telling us that you know more about flying saucers than anybody. Is that true? Well, I know a little bit, but let me say something here. What a beautiful patio here. What do you got that rabbit running around there? Cutting your grass down? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know that rabbit eats the zinnias at no. night? No oh. kidding. 
No oh. kidding. That pretty little bunny, you see him hopping around here every now and then. He's an enemy of mine, believe me. <laughs> he eats all the leaves off the zinnias, leaves nothing but the stem. I think no. they're cute. Those little yeah, ones. but I hate his howling at night. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a new name for him, Stinky. No, well, let's not talk about rabbits. Here's the professor who knows about flying saucers, and I've, yeah. I've got a million questions I'd like well, to ask you, Professor. Well, keep on asking them. All right. Uh, 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 well, are there flying saucers? Absolutely. Uh, just as real as our planes are today that we have been so accustomed to. Where'd they come from? Well, they're coming from planet Mars, planet Venus, and as well as uh, other planets, also from the Wolf Star 359, which is late, uh, late eight uh, light years away from our system. What is that, a star? Uh, it's a system. I see. Like ours, solar system. There's uh, uh, eight light years uh, quite a distance because one light year is something like 60, uh, 6 billion miles. Yeah, I know it's some distance. Yes, uh, it is quite a distance, but they're coming from all those different places. Well, listen, right. Professor, if these things are really here now, how come we haven't ever seen them, you know, before this? Well, we have not been air-minded as we are today. We have not uh, thought of anything else but birds flying through space, and sometimes even the birds have been noticed to come, uh, strange birds, noticed to come to into this world that no one seemed to know where they come from, and it's possible they could be coming from other planets as well, like the flying saucers do. Have you ever seen a flying saucer? Oh, yes, I've seen many of them. I have photographed quite a number of them. You've taken uh, pictures? Yes. Uh, oh. The electronic na system of the U.S. Navy asked me to cooperate with them one time. That was in 47. Uh, see if I could catch some pictures of the flying uh, objects, uh, which I did. You have the pictures Yes, now. I have taken some pictures, and all my pictures at present are with the U.S. Air Force. Well, well, what do you know about that? Well, How do they travel? Uh, well, they travel uh, by magnetic uh, force, as it is known, which is nothing but the same kind of power that is customary. No one as uh, static electricity producing our lightning as we have it every now and then, had it the last few days. Oh, it's magnetic power that they're using then. That's huh? right, utilizing nature's own forces. How do they make the fast turn? That they you do not make the turns, I don't believe, because uh, as I have talked to one man, they do not make what? the turns. They just go forward and then sideways and wait. backwards and every which way like that, but do not make turns. Wait, wait a minute. You said you'd talk to a man. What man? Yeah. Well, on November the 20th, of which I'm writing a book now to be published in the next two months, um, uh, Noah is going to be titled as Flying Saucer Have Landed. At that time, this saucer did land at uh, the desert. It's 20 about 10 miles from the desert center on the way to Arizona on that Parker Road. Oh, Parker, and, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Uh, about 10 miles from Desert Center on that uh, road there. And the ship come down at the time, and I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing one person out of that ship, which was a, a saucer come out of a mothership. You mean a man out of the flying saucer? That's right. You mean you actually talked to Yes, him? I did. We went out there with the hope of catching a good picture of uh, ships flying through there, as they have been reported. And uh, I did take uh, seven pictures at the time. And I didn't know whether it all turned out on good or not when I started dismantling while well, this uh, ship finally disappeared and then a the man appeared. And I walked up to where the man was waving to me to come and to find out after I got there there was a spaceman and he was a Venetian. You, he was a Venetian? That's correct. You mean, uh, you very mean from Venice? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, not from Venice, uh, California, not at all. He was from Venus, oh, planet Ralph. Venus. From the planet <laughs> That's Venus, That's right. Really? That's at least what he said. I finally got him to say it in this manner because he didn't know what the word Venus meant. So I pointed to, uh, to the sun. It was 1 o'clock at noon. And I orbited and called the orbits by number or by name as well. And when I got come to the orbit number 3, which is the Earth's orbit, I pointed to myself in the Earth. Then he got the idea and he pointed to the sun and put, uh, made one orbit and then the second orbit. And then he stopped and he pointed to himself and to that orbit. That's Venus. And uh, that uh, meant Venus. Then after I said uh, Venus four times, he stated... He also repeated the word Venus. Oh, so I knew that way that he was from Venus. Weren't you uh, frightened? Not at all. It seemed that the man had some kind of a power on him that uh, didn't give you any fright of any kind, didn't put you on guard against him or anything like that. What did he look like? Yes. He was a very good-looking man, a, a far better looking than most of us are today. Wow. And <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, I know. He had beautiful, beautiful long hair, very no, wavy, I mean, and ladies would give any amount of money for that kind of hair. I and suppose it's really not illogical that he should look better. He's some ways ahead of us, isn't he? That's right. A good many thousands of years, oh, at least. Wow. Really? <laughs> so we'll give you his uh, age and, uh, and uh, height and weight as we have judged him. Uh, he was about 28 years of age, 5 foot 6, and around 135 pounds in weight. And uh, 
far as time is concerned, as how far ahead of us he is concerned, he should be a long ways ahead of us, because in Ezekiel, in the Bible, chapter 1, it tells you that flying saucers have been seen coming to this earth 2,546 years ago. You mean there's oh. a reference to it in the Bible? That's correct. Oh, there's it, a hymn about them. Yes. I, wait, I got a hymn book here. Let yes. me look and see if I can find the hymn. Yes. What hymn, Ezekiel, uh, saw the wheel. Oh, like that. wait a minute. Ezekiel saw, saw the wheel. wheel. Here, I got a wheel within here a wheel. Ezekiel saw the wheel.